So today I'm going to be showing you how to warm up a horse that maybe is naturally, like Eagle's naturally built on the forehand and he naturally wants to come a little bit too round, a little bit too low. He doesn't want to pull into the contact as much and his frame kind of goes too deep. So I'm going to show you how to warm up a horse like this because I know a lot of people are like, do I stretch them? Do I not? Um, what sort of thing do I do? And people get very worried about letting them down when they're on the forehand. So I'm going to show you what I do with him. Um, and yeah. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, so again, oh, I've got sand on me. So again, with, with Eagle, we've just stood and done the contact video. So he's been standing still for about five minutes. So he's completely switched off. Um, he thinks he's still trolling around the field. So what I'm first going to do is just think about like his, his, his reaction to my leg a little bit. So if I put my leg on, like there's no contact or anything, I'm not really worrying about that at the moment. If I put my leg on, so I just squeeze my calf on, you see how like nothing happens. So he's not reacting to my leg, there's no reaction. So what I'm going to do this time, squeeze my leg on and give him a little poke. So go right. So if I put my leg on, I want a reaction from you. Like I'm not putting any pressure. It's just the first kind of steps to it. So again, like I touch him, no reaction, good. So just touch him on my leg again and then just relax. Take my leg off, really important that you take your leg off in between. And then again, I'm just gonna touch him, good boy. And then just think about just waking him up again. Touch him, good boy. So there he listened to my leg, which is all I really want. So now he's listening to that squeeze a little bit more, which is good. He's walking a little bit better. So what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna start to get a contact with him. I'm gonna start to get that connection. And what you'll notice with Eagle is, the minute you start to get connection, he's going to want to start to come too down, too round, um, a little bit behind the vertical. And this has always been his problem. And this is something I've struggled with a lot because a lot of the judges are like, you know, he needs to be out more in the neck. And I totally get that. But he is not, he was not strong enough to be one of these horses that was going around in self-carriage. Like as a baby, he always struggled with it a lot. So I've had to really think the hind legs have to be working for me to push his neck out and me to get him into self-carriage. So he's not a horse that's naturally gonna do it. So what I'm thinking about now, I'm, I'm having a contact, I'm not pulling back, I'm being very aware that I'm not pulling his neck in, but I also am aware that he's not in the best outline at the moment, and that's because he's not pushing from behind. So that is really what I focus on with him in a warm up is getting him to push a little bit more from behind. I don't stretch him as long and low as Wilf, because I have to have that contact a little bit more and have a little bit more engagement. I would say at the end of the session, I get really good stretching because he's worked properly and he's pushing with his hind legs more. So hopefully today at the end of this one, I will record that as well and I can put it on the end of this video for you. Good, so just even now, just thinking of like squeezing my calf, push him into the contact. And again, like you'll see, he'll try and evade it. Like Eagle's favorite thing is to take like a funny step and walk to kind of evade walking from behind and this gets right really it's not good in dressage at all because it's not like a clear rhythm but i can't let that put me off getting him in front of my leg because when i try and start pushing him in front of my leg sometimes he can take that funny step and then i'll be like oh i'm ruining it i'm gonna back off i i you know i'm just gonna let him walk how he wants to um, because i don't want to disturb him the problem with this he'll never change so I kind of have to go, right, that's fine. I'm going to go through that tension. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to get tight. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm not going to panic and start pulling him around and kicking him and going, please don't do that dodgy walk because I know I'd get like a four for in a test. But I've got to push him through it and I've got to go, no, it's okay. I just want you to start pushing from your hind legs. And this is something that I battled for a very long time. Like I used to think I was doing something wrong or I was kind of ruining the walk or it was me doing it wrong. But the more I've started to do it with him, I've realized that I've just got to go through it. And as long as I put my leg on and then relax it and stay relaxed, he's okay and he comes through it. So the walk feels better now, it feels more engaged. Good boy. Good lad. So what I'm going to do, oh, one other pointer as well I've got with this. When you're thinking about making them push from behind, I'm going to show you this. And I wouldn't do this normally, but I'll show you for an example. Is don't, um, let's see if I can do it. Don't rush the walk so it's, he's not gonna do it now. because, Like what happens is they're behind the leg and you see people go faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. The problem is all I'm doing if I'm pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing is you can see his front leg's getting quicker and quicker and quicker and his hind leg's not getting any quicker. So you're chasing the front leg and the back leg's still dribbling. So actually what you need to do is you need to think about slowing the front leg. So here I'm just gonna slow the front leg and then this is hard 
this is something I'm still trying to get. And then think about pushing the back leg. So my rhythm in my body is going like slow in front, but then my legs going right, come on hind leg. And it's very much a balance and it's a feeling that you have to learn to get. But I think that's one of the most common, that was my biggest mistake I made with him. Um, my biggest mistake I made as well when trying to make them to PF, I was just thinking about making them go quicker and quicker and quicker. And actually the walk needs to be smaller, shorter, but more energy, if that makes sense. But anyway, I'm going to walk a while, haven't I? Let's, um, let's go into trot. There's so much to explain in dressage. Let's go into trot and I'll show you what I do. Okay, so whenever I warm Eagle up, he feels very heavy in the hand. He's either extremely heavy or not in the contact at all. And he used to be never there and I've had to really work to get him to pull into the rain. So now he pulls into the rain. It doesn't feel perfect when I warm up, but I know that through getting him a little bit more engaged, boy, then it comes here. And you see how he kind of is not accepting it. He's a bit like, oh, I'm not sure about this. He's just at the moment leaning on the bit. There's no like give in his jaw, but this is quite, quite normal for Eagle's warm up. Um, especially, you know, when he's going well and training's going well, his warm ups are always much better. Like he'll come out and kind of remember it. Whereas we're having a little bit of a harder time. It's not as good, but I think that's normal, isn't it? It kind of comes in ebbs and flows with training horses. It never goes, goes well all the time. So yeah, to me, like it's good. Like he's pulling into the rain, but he just feels like, I feel like I'm slightly having to, to hold him up. Um, and I want to feel like I could push my hand towards the bit and he would keep it accepting it. Good, so you see if I push my hand towards a bit, you see how he kind of plays with the mouth and drops back a little bit? It's not too bad, but you want to feel like if I push my hands towards the bit, he takes the rein out but doesn't lean on it. And what I really want to start to look for is that his nose is not behind the vertical, um, which is tough with him. But I think it's important to explain as well, like there's so much scrutiny with a horse being behind the vertical and I'm definitely against it. I don't think horses should be, but you've got to understand some horses as well. Like it's a weakness. Um, and I'm well aware that his nose shouldn't be behind the vertical like it is now, but he's not quite got that push from behind yet to push his nose out. It's getting there. It's getting better. Good boy. So I'm going to stop talking so much um, and I'm going to start doing more transitions because that's I do a little bit more transitions with him. So walk. Good boy. Good boy. And you'll notice with him like how little I'm bending him. Um, he is naturally like quite a floppy horse and, and very bendy, like kind of almost too supple. Um, so if I had a horse that's a little bit more stiff, I would think about bending them in the rib cage a little bit more, bending them in the body um, and like thinking about that bend in the neck as well. But because he naturally falls around and wobbles and and struggles like it will really throw him off balance if I do too much so even on the circles you know I can see his inside eye I can see a little bit more of the inside of his face but he's not like uh, for example where a neck strap would lie I'm not letting him bend too much there because that's where like I'll show you this is this is going to be horrendous everyone okay so if for example you see if I bend him here you see how he falls out and you see how deep he's going. 
how round he's going and behind the vertical he's going. That's because if I'm making him lose his balance by overbending him. So right now I'm going to straighten him up again. Sorry, Eagle. It's all for the cause of education. <laughs> Um, and again, like now I'm keeping his neck straight and you see how he can bring his head out. He can keep himself in better balance. Good boy, I know, I'm sorry. And then he finds it all a little bit easier, but I'm glad I showed you guys that because again, that's a, such a common, common, common issue of people wanting horses to let go and to give of overbending them. Oh, good boy. Okay, so now we're just looking at the canter. He actually feels quite good today. <laughs> love how I sound shocked um, so in the canter I'm really thinking about using my upper body to basically like my favourite thing someone's told me it was Wendy Williams and she told me to think about drawing their withers towards your stomach and thinking about it being like a magnet and I think that's one of the things that has stuck in my head for so long and really helps me so that's really what I'm thinking about now I don't want him you know, he's not in a competition frame yet, but I don't want him to feel like he's cantering downhill. Good boy. Feels good, it feels like he's nice in front of my legs. So you can see like how my heels aren't having to work. I'm not having to do anything to keep him in canter. Like I'm really just thinking about the balance. But what I will do every so often is kind of touch him with my leg, check he goes, check he's still there because I don't want to abandon him. You don't want to be a passenger, you want to be a pilot. Good boy. But no, he feels really good today. So nice pushing canter. I don't feel like, oh, okay, well that's fine. These are one of these things. So you see how there, I slightly lost the contact. I slightly resisted in my hand and look what happened. It pulled him back. It interrupted the contact and he kind of felt a little bit trapped and then he had to wriggle his mouth. So and these are tiny things. I mean, you probably literally won't see me do it with my hand. It can be like a millimetre of me blocking and then him going, oh, I don't like that. And then me going, I'm really sorry. I'll let go again. <laughs> good. So upper body to trot. Whoa, good boy. Back in canter. Good lad, you feel lovely today. Good. And again, like it's not, it's not the perfect outline of where I'd want him. You know, I would want him down and, and out and over his back a little bit more and all that, but you know, I've got to remember that he's not quite strong enough behind yet and he needs that strength to stretch. I think it's quite easy to forget actually like horses have to be incredibly strong to do that long and low. And I know like I see four year olds doing it. And I'm like, oh, well, how does that work? But they, these horses, you know, they've naturally got a better connection. They've naturally are stronger. You know, some horses are and Eagle just wasn't one of those horses that was strong. He was always flop floppy really and um, kind of like a slinky so we've had to work quite hard to connect them together good but you can see like my hands not pulling back I'm not really doing much with my hand um, even when you see where he comes off the bit then which I'm really glad he did you see how I didn't rush to pull him down because the thing is if at any time he comes off the forehand or off the bit I'm going to encourage it because that's really what I want him to do so I'm not going to go like quick get on the bit um, get rounder because I want him to come off the shoulder so you know you could look at it as a negative but I kind of look at it as a positive like wicked you've brought yourself up so when he spooks and stuff I'm always like yes it's extra help to get him off the forehand good boy and today he feels really engaged which is so nice um, but if he didn't I would do more transitions um, so I'll do a few now but you know I'm kind of just enjoying it floating around good boy and if you've watched Will's warm-up, you'll see how much better his canter to trot transitions are. He uh, keeps a, a push a lot more. Keeps a push, is that a technical saying? Keeps pushing. I'm off now with the speaking. No stopping me. Okay, good boy. So, that's it, good lad. So I'll just do a couple more transitions. Not pulling back, just thinking about relaxing. Whoa, I lost my balance on that one. Good, good, sit. And that's something I was really bad at. I never used to sit before my canter transitions. And it's only from riding the four-year-olds that I've started figuring that out. And it started to help the older ones. So I'll just do another one and sh show you what I mean. Whoa, whoa, oh, don't tip forwards. Yeah, good boy, he did that one for himself. 
Okay, so let's just do another one and I'll show you. Good boy. So just think trot. So I kind of engage my core to trot. He's on fire today. Right, and then I'm gonna sit into canter. Good boy. So that is basically my warm up with Eagle. Um, very much depends how they feel on the day. Some days, like I was saying, you can feel a lot more behind my leg, but yeah, I can only ride the horse I've got. I'm sure we'll make more. Um, so yeah, that's the warm up. So now I'm gonna give him a little walk and then we'll film another series. So um, as you can see, we've worked him. We've made a center line video. Oh. And can you see how now, how he's not behind the vertical? You see how he's pulling out the rain? You know, this is fragile, so it might come and go, but you see there how he's in a much better shape. And that is just because I've just worked him for 40 minutes engaging him. So this time now for him is the most beneficial to stretch him. He's not behind the vertical. He's not leaning on the rein. He's pulling in a nice way. He's more engaged. He's not on the forehand. Again, I'm being really careful to not overbend him though, because that will push him on the forehand. It's very fragile. So I'm being very quiet, but you can see, you know, how his neck is in a much, 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 much better shape. And I'm so glad that I've got this on camera. <laughs> Good boy. Oh. Good lad. Good lad. So also you can notice how close together my hands are. That's because if I drop my hands wider, it's gonna try and make him go rounder. So I want my hands close together and really pushing forwards. So it's all the time my hands are going together and forward. So there, when he drops off, I just push him towards his mouth, push my leg on. So come on, keep working, keep pushing. Keep going out to the bit. Good boy, well done. Ooh. 